So in this section, I'm going to do uh, another variation of this idea of uh, perpetuities and finding out the present value of perpetuities. This is not an extremely important variation, but it is uh, helpful, in my opinion, in uh, reinforcing some of these ideas that we've talked about while understanding uh, how to calculate the present value of perpetuities. And so I'm going to do another variation of the same example as you've seen before. Uh, let's suppose that you have a benevolent and rich uncle and he promises to give you $500 every year. So it's uh, very much like a perpetuity in the sense that uh, you're going to get the same 500 and you're going to get it forever. The twist here is that your uncle uh, seemingly feels a little bit more generous than he normally does. And he says, look, I'm going to give you the first $500, not one year from now, but starting today. And so that is where the difference is. Instead of saying, uh, look, the first cash flow is going to come to you one year from now, which is what we assumed uh, when we were talking about, you know, perpetuities in general, um, we are basically saying that you get the first 500 here, and then you get the second one here, and then you get the third one here, and this is how it goes. Now, the reason why I am emphasizing this is that if somebody now asks you, you know, what is the present value or how much is this worth to you today? Uh, you know, students sometimes make the mistake of saying, oh, it's a perpetuity. Present value is just 500, which is the first cash flow divided by 0 0.04 right or basically you know just do c over r where c is the constant cash flow which in this case is 500 and so this solves out to 12500 uh this is incorrect again this formula the c over r formula only applies when you have a perpetuity that is giving giving you the first cash flow or the first 500 in this case one year from now which is not the case here. The first 500 that you're getting is right here at time period zero. Uh, you might say, well, okay, I understand that, but it seems uh, it seems like the solution is pretty simple. If this 500 weren't here, then the rest of the stuff pretty much looks like an ordinary perpetuity or a you know, perpetuity in general. So I know that the worth of all these 500s that are you know, occurring starting year one, two, so on and so forth, I know those are worth 12,500. So then literally uh, I am getting 12,500 here, which is the discounted value of all these 500s. And on top of that, I'm getting another 500 today. That is just an added bonus. So really what I'm getting is 13,000. And this is the right way uh, to think about it, because in this case, when you're getting the first cash flow at time period zero, uh, the general rule then is that present value is not just C over R, it's also C over R plus C, because this is the extra C that you're getting at time period zero. And if you do the math, I'll leave it to you to show that this actually, this entire thing solves out to C over R into 1 plus R. And so you can confirm this. If we actually solve this out, this is going to be equal to uh, 500 divided by uh, 0 0.04 into 1.04 which uh, again I'll leave it to you to confirm that this to this exactly solves out to this 13,000 that we found above and so this is a um, I mean for the lack of better uh, terminology I refer to this as a uh, perpetuity perpetuity due perpetuity due and uh, this is just the term due here represents the idea that the first cash flow is occurring at time period zero. It is a perpetuity, but it's different from an ordinary perpetuity. In an ordinary perpetuity, the first cash flow is occurring one year from now. In a perpetuity due, the first cash flow is occurring at time period zero. In that case, the formula changes just a little bit. Basically, you take the present value of an ordinary perpetuity, 
which is all these 500s, and you multiply that by 1 plus r. So that's how you find out the present value of a perpetuity due or a cash flow in which the first cash or a perpetuity in which the first cash flow is occurring at time period zero.